All right, hey everybody, and welcome to Chew Stream, where we talk about art and life as an artist. I'm your host, Bobby Chu, and today we have another 90 minute art challenge. What is this art challenge? Well, you're going to be drawing with me, you're going to be painting with me, and you have 90 minutes to do it. Every week, I give you a new uh, photo or artwork or you know something to study from. And during the stream, we do a 90 minute challenge, right? A 90 minute challenge to use the image below or the image on the screen, link is below, uh, and create an illustration inspired by this image. Super fun, very challenging. Let's go, let's do this. Okay, and before we get started, and of course you could already get started, but I want to let everybody know that you can also ask me questions on slido.com, hashtag ChewStream, or Discord. The Discord uh, channel there, I believe, hopefully, is in the uh, details below. Today was a little crazy. Last week, I got a virus on my computer and I had to format my computer, so... If you ever done streams before, there are like a million settings, a million things to plug in to make sure everything's working. So um, hopefully the details are in the hopefully the details for Discord are in the uh, details of the video. So if you are on Discord, feel free to. Give me a shout um, and just uh, ask me questions live as we're doing this painting. Now, I wanted to also talk about this painting a little bit. Who's this painting done by? This is done by Frederick Remington in the early 1900s. Um, pretty darn sure it is, it is before any serious kind of nighttime photography, especially this is in color. And if... I was saying last time, if you ever took, um, if you ever took a candle or something like that and tried to paint from candlelight, ugh, it is extremely hard. And whenever you bring out your paints into daylight, there are so many subtleties, so many things that you never noticed. Um, you might have colors that get super saturated, things like that. So how did he do it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, and I'm sure there's probably really good, very logical, reasonable explanations for this, but what I'm thinking is it's kind of like the way that I study. I try to study things to really understand it to a point where I can kind of create it myself in a way that makes sense. So for this nighttime painting, I want to look at the values. I want to look at the amount of saturation. Where is the saturation? How are the hues changing in this image? And that was the most important thing to me. The other thing I want to mention is, you know, as you're painting this painting, concentrate. Concentrate not just on copying uh, colors, tones, things like that, proportions, the drawing of it, but try to concentrate on um, creating. You know, this is only reference for your own creation. Now, how are you going to create this image? Uh, so in other words, what would I do? How would I do the sky? Okay, what hue? What saturation? What tone? Why? Why? And then I also found myself a lot of times I would start off the challenge just by eye dropping around and looking at my hue saturation uh, value slider to see where the values are and try to make sense of it that way. I think we have uh, somebody on Discord. I kind of heard a little static. Somebody there want to chime in? Yeah, we, we have multiple people. <laughs> Uh, um, I have also a question, Bobby. Sure. Um, wh when you're starting, um, how how do you critique your own uh, work process, or how you critique your own work? Do you have like a, a group, or maybe ask Kai for some uh, case for some feedback? 
So how do I get feedback? How do I um, critique my own work? I generally, I'll have a bunch of little check marks in my head, okay? And this is something that uh, perhaps everybody else can kind of think about as well. So one big check mark is if I just glance at the painting, am I seeing the things I want to see? Am I noticing the things I want to notice? Is there anything standing out? Is there anything that feels flat that shouldn't feel flat? Like sometimes you might paint something where you're using a big shape that is flat tone. Now sometimes that works and a, a lot of times it doesn't. And if you just kind of look around and you go, where are the flat spots? Yeah, that looks flat and it feels flat because sometimes you know you use a flat piece of tone and it actually works with the context of everything else to make something feel shapely um, another thing that you could always do that i'm sure you've heard of is flip your canvas so you're looking at the mirror image if there is anything that looks funny it's funny okay it's not just to you in the mirror image it's to everybody else every which way you know, in the right side, uh, it'll still look funny to everybody else, but perhaps it doesn't look as funny to you because you've been looking at it for so long. Um, another thing, oh, a huge one, a huge, huge one. How does the painting make you feel? And now this might be like, what, what, what is he talking about? He's talking about my feelings and stuff. And no, I, you, you know, like paintings are supposed to move us. They are supposed to evoke emotion in us many times. And um, that's a really great way to kind of gauge your painting. What is the feeling that you want out of this painting? And uh, are you hitting that mark? Are you getting those emotions and before we go on to another uh, another little another question i want to talk about this painting here just like with every painting what i like to do is i like to do these videos for you guys without actually having the reference this is how i painted it you know straight out of my head um how can i do that it's because i copied this thing in many different ways, thinking about it in many different ways over and over and over again. There is something to be said about repetition, everybody. You can see the last one I have on there. I have a little bunny uh, in the corner there anticipating what was I going to paint. I was thinking, yeah, I kind of think I'm going to paint a bunny for the one that I'm going to do straight out of my head. Now, the other thing I want to mention here, okay, the other thing I want to mention here is you can see at the bottom of the screen, it says 90 minute ch art challenge, hashtag 90 minute art challenge. When you're done your challenge, upload it online and I will be happy to share some of my favorites every week. So why don't we take a look at last week's, okay? So this one, amazing, awesome, fabulous, noob fabulous noob doesn't really seem like a noob in my books that was the reference from last week so you can see this person has taken a lot of liberties with the illustration that uh, they created but at the same time it's wonderful what a wonderful depiction or a wonderful kind of painting inspired by this painting let's take a look at the next one here oh what happened there Let's try to refresh and let's go. Uh, 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 okay, you know what? We will go back to these. Things. I think my internet, my internet's been buggy these last bunch of weeks. Um, but yeah, I'll come back to this. Let's go back to here. All right. So that first one, anyways, that was really cool. That was uh, last week's topic, a very different topic. Um, yeah, why don't we go on to some questions? Well, those images hopefully load. 
All right, Slido questions. Here we go, Slido questions. Denny asks, I like to draw more illustrative, uh, I like to draw more illustrative. Some say is my style, but I'm afraid I draw this way because I don't know how to draw more realistic and I am naive. Any advice? Denny, you are speaking actually a lot of wisdom. Um, there's style that we develop and everything, but some people, like one of my artistic heroes, Craig Mullins, says much of style are kind of like, what do you say? Kind of like um, tropes on how to finish things without truly thinking about how to actually, or not finish them, but how to paint and draw them without actually understanding how to paint and draw them we go to formulas right we go to okay yeah uh, that head angle is kind of a little bit confusing but i have this slightly different head angle that i know boom it works every time um it is funny though right because styles and everything uh, when you're dealing with animation or something, it, it's hugely important. We need to create a style. But at the same time, it's like we don't want to rely on our styles, our little formulas that we've created in our heads over the years as the answers to everything. Very complex question. Uh, very complex, uh, yeah. Yeah. Very complex question. So I hope that answers it a bit. You know, it is important to find styles, but it's very important not to rely on styles. I think that's that's the best way to kind of answer that. And uh, do we have any other Discord questions? Ask away. Right now, uh, oh yeah. Hi. Uh, I have, uh, hello, uh, I have a uh... A question. Sorry, sure. I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> no problem. What's okay. your name? Um, Where are you from? Uh, I'm Aaron from the Philippines. Hi, Aaron. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, too. Uh, this is actually my first time uh, interacting with you uh, ever since. Anyways, um, uh, what do you suggest on uh, giving on focusing? Um, yeah, sorry, I'm a bit nervous. <clears throat> no problem. Um, should I focus or sh should I focus on doing commissions or just focusing on building portfolios for the companies that are that are trying to apply someday? And yeah, it it's kind of a bit hard here in the Philippines because the way art community or art how art. Um, how it's valued because there's there are there are not much of studios here in the philippines like the philippines is in supporting the art so most of the filipinos go uh, abroad to other countries like uh, canada but for me uh, for a student should i focus like for doing commissions or should i put more time focusing building my portfolio aaron Great question. What I like to do is I try to double things up all the time. You know, can I take any commissions that will align with my portfolio that I want to create? Can I perhaps um, convince them like, okay, you want a painting of you and your wife? Well, how about you as a barbarian and your wife as a sorceress? And, you know, and I want to put it in my concept art portfolio for fantasy or something like that. Um, I remember in the beginning of my career, that's what I would do with my freelance jobs. I would try to, I would try to pick things that hopefully can somewhat align with the kind of portfolio or the kind of jobs that I wanted in the future. So it didn't really matter to me as much the money of course money it is important we need to eat 
right? But at the same time, um, what I put as the most important was the concept of the job. You know, what kind of job is this? What are they asking me to paint and draw? Uh, If they're asking me to paint characters of them and I don't want to do characters uh, for, for my career, then I'll try not to take that. If that means that I have to eat, uh, you know, rice and ketchup that night, then fine, you know. But if I have no rice and ketchup, then then I just might take that job. You you see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, the reason why I asked that question because I've been thinking of. Yeah, I know because we need money, like commissions to do the work. But that's why. But mostly the commissions that are offering on that side, like Discord servers, are mostly like fan arts. There aren't like uh, like concept art related. So, so it's either like I just choose the short term commission just for like for money or like for the long term making portfolio for the future that I want to take something. So like visual development. So it's really hard for me to choose like which should I prioritize first is either like the survival survival or my future career or something. It's uh, kind of a bit lost. So. Yeah, there's a bit of a balance there. It's kind of like you ever see those people spinning the plates on a, on a stick, like on TV or like at a circus or something, and they start to spin one, it's easy. But we are not trying to spin just one plate. We're not just trying to feed ourselves. We're trying to also work on our careers. So that's another plate, you know, and then so we kind of have to attend to each one constantly like, okay, um, I need to feed myself. Where's my freelance? Okay, that's some freelance. I'm going to do that. Uh, But oh, no, I don't feel my career going evolving as quickly let me go back over there and work on my career oh now i don't have any food and let me go back over there and you know do some jobs and hopefully sometimes you can find that the same task does multiple things like you get a commission where it's working on something that you can eventually you can put into your portfolio now how do you get more of those jobs you gotta you gotta uh a lot of times in the beginning, you got to spend your own free time to create those things and put it out there so people see it and then they go, oh, yeah, I want Aaron to do some more of that stuff. And then you get these jobs. But then the jobs might not be as much money in the very beginning. Like many of us, we go through this. You, If you can survive, I would do it anyways. And I would do it for my portfolio. Now, would I do this commission every week if they ask me again? No, because like we said, it, it wasn't worth it, right? The jobs in the beginning might be not as worth it. It doesn't pay as much. You can't afford to keep doing that. So hopefully the plan is eventually it will lead you to better paying jobs. And the other thing is, Aaron, the other thing is that you must believe that um really it doesn't matter the industry around you because you're talking to me i'm in canada right we online the borders go down as long as we can access each other online as long as we have a way of um paying money or collecting money then all of a sudden we can take jobs anywhere uh so i hope that gives you some some bit of hope there uh you know it doesn't matter if you live in the philippines i was talking with uh max kostenko in he lives close to moscow okay in russia how many russian companies does he work for right now i don't think he's working for any you know he worked on uh pokemon the live action movie he worked on all these other movies you know it's a different world out there i did 
I did every single film project that I've ever worked on. Majority of it, I've worked from home. Sometimes they might want me to come in and, and you know, for a little meeting or something like that, but it's majority is always at home. So there you go. I hope that helps. And, and uh, it's all about having your eye on the prize. What is my ultimate objective here 10 years down the line what do i want to be doing and every move that we make is either supporting that uh or it's perhaps supporting things that will support that like making a little bit of money so i could feed myself so i could do some more work that is going in that direction towards my goal so I hope that answered your question. And now you can see uh, in the painting here, I'm starting to work on just blocking in a bunch of the land. I'm not doing the mirror image here. I'm doing something inspired by the reference. You can totally just copy the reference yourself out there if you're watching this. Um, that is something that I did constantly trying to figure out what was going on in the artist's head. Is there another question in the uh, Discord? Hi, Bob D. Hello. Hi. Hi, um, my name's Janelle. I'm from the UK, but I'm originally from the Philippines as well. So this question is going to come from a privileged standpoint, but um, I'm sure it's an issue for most people as well. I've always had this, um, uh, like this confusion in my head on which path to take because nowadays there's so many avenues to take from the entertainment industry, whether it's illustration, concept art, or 3D, or, or any other types of forms of art out there. So my question is, like, how do you figure out which avenue to take? Because there's so many pathways nowadays. Yes. And it seems like an issue for many, many, many artists out there. What is your name again? Uh, Janelle. Janelle. Great question. Great question. Thank you. Um, you know, I get this question more and more and I plan on making a video specifically for this question because yeah, you're right. And especially nowadays, we seem to have even more kind of choices because we're all kind of stuck at home or many of us are. Um, so what do we do with our time? You know, and also, even if we know what industry we want to get into, how do we know what we want to do in that industry? Maybe you want to go into games or movies. Well, what do you want to do in that, right? Well, maybe you want to do environments. Maybe you want to do 3D. But perhaps you don't know enough about those things to make an educated decision, right? So what I kind of feel is that nowadays in somebody in your position or in my position, there are a lot of choices that we can make that when we think about it, yeah, it's, that could be a pretty good choice. You know, should you spend the next month learning painting or the next year learning painting? Should you learn 3D? These are all good choices. So my answer is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which choice you make. The most important choice is to actually choose and to stick with it until you've gained skills before moving on. Because so many of us, we get discouraged and we will stop doing that thing, stop trying or stop learning that thing because it's not coming to us quick enough. But then when you think about how long it took you to learn to draw to this point, maybe it took you quite a while. You know, maybe it took you quite a while doing bad drawings before any good drawings started to come. And then this part is for many of the uh, really great artists out there, really good professionals out there. Uh, there is something to be said for you guys as well. Because say you spend all this time and you really learn something well, and now you're good at it. Now the frustration isn't there. Now the first frustration isn't there, but also you're not learning as much anymore, perhaps, because everything's kind of easy and you get used to it. 
you forget about your friend's frustration that got you there in the first place. You know, and then you meet frustration again one day because the world has evolved and now you have to tackle something new and now you got to try something new. And you're not used to frustration. And then you put it down. I can't handle it. I can't handle this ZBrush stuff. I'm going to put it down and I'm not going to pick it up again. And then eventually, like for many artists out there, the ones that didn't convert to digital painting or computers, eventually many of them got phased out. You know, so it is important to constantly be learning. And what should you learn? Something good, something that will benefit you. What is that particular thing? It doesn't matter as long as you can identify it as being good for you. Uh, this is a good idea. I'm not sure if it's the right idea. Then that to me is a big check mark. Let's do it. Let's do that thing for like six months until I'm pretty darn good at it before I could decide whether or not I want to keep pursuing it further or if I want to change something. Like for me, I, I like doing uh, layouts. That's how I kind of started. And then I thought, ah, oh, animating. And then I really pursued animating until I was, you know, uh, good enough to get a real entry level job at. And then I was like, nah, I don't like animating. I'm going to learn uh, painting. And then later on, learn ZBrush. Okay, ZBrush looks important. It's very frustrating to learn uh, because I just was so used to doing things well in my own way, of digital painting. Um, but the frustration is something that I like to identify with and I like to go, hello, old friend. Yes, I am, you know, it's like, you're back. Come hang out with me. It's like your friend that is annoying. Do you ever have a friend that's annoying, but it's still your friend? Yeah, maybe. Well, uh, I do. I do. I have some friends that are annoying. I'm sure I'm annoying to some people too, perhaps. Who knows? Uh, but then deep down inside, they still have their heart in the right place and they're still my friend. Uh, that's what frustration is to me. Um, yeah, so the most important thing is just to decide on one of those ideas that are somewhat good and keep pursuing it until you've developed skills before you decide to keep going or leave it. If you only try, spend a bunch of time, don't really develop any skills, and then decide you're going to leave it, you're going to try something else, you could keep doing that all your life and not gain any skills. And that would be the biggest shame. Cool. Thank you, Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, yeah, so does anybody else have any questions on Discord? Hello. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Hi. What's your name? Where are you from? My name's Chloe. I'm from Alabama, lower U.S. Right on. Hey, Chloe. Hi. Um, so, wow, I've been a fan for a long time. I was, I started seeing your stuff on DeviantArt when I was in high school. And I was, I was, in, I was pretty inspired, but I was destined also to go to art school. And I did four years of that. And now I'm on the other side What's and I've you learned from? a thing about humility. <laughs> I guess there is a something to say about that oversaturation in the market. Where do you go from here? What do you do? So I've been out of college two years and I think I'm I'm all right in art, you know, I've practiced a lot. I love to do it, but I work full time at Walmart <laughs> and I I still practice all the time. I still do all that, but I can't seem to get that job. I can't seem to just really get any further. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, let me tell you one thing, Chloe, right off the bat is that um, he, I don't even know you, but I believe in you because um, you can sense passion in your voice. And really that's, that's all we really need is the want. 
uh, you know, if you have at least three fingers all together, <laughs> you got some eyes, you got a brain, uh, you can do it. The, the real thing here is how to really bring out that hunger in you. Because out of all of the crazy, amazing artists I've ever met in my life, I've also met artists that um, were not always crazy and amazing. Surprise, surprise. Uh, some of us never had big goals and then never really went anywhere. Some of us thought that we were working hard, but when we really thought about it compared to like, okay, yeah, real hardworking people, um, what is their definition of hardworking? Is it the same as mine? I'm not trying to say like you're not hardworking, Chloe, not at all. What I'm saying is that I didn't know hard work until I really got exposed to it. Um, you know when you're driving your car and your gas light turns on? You don't have to get gas right away, do you, Chloe? You, know, you could keep pushing it quite a bit further. And I feel like that's something that eventually all of us have to learn in one way or another that when we feel like we need to stop, most of the time that's not when, when we need to stop. That's not, you know, um, being that tired is not really when you need to stop. You need to stop like maybe an hour after that, two hours after that, because later on, that level of tiredness or whatever it might be, um, exhaustion from just working all day and things like that, you'll see that it doesn't affect you as much anymore. Like everything in life, we get stronger when we start practicing and start to, um, you know, really exercise those muscles. And perhaps those muscles are, uh, kind of like determination muscles, or I would even say to me that muscle is kind of like a decision, like my Forrest Gump muscle, you know, like I'm going to decide to play ping pong and then I'm just playing ping pong. Everything else goes out the door and I just start doing that. So when you get home, you think about drawing. Don't think about whether or not you're too tired to draw just start drawing um, and over time you'll see yeah you know what M everything else my whole body does not want to do this but my heart my mind they're telling me to do this so I'm just gonna keep doing it and then it builds up and it builds up and it builds up and before you know it you are so proud of yourself um, for pushing through and, and not only that, but you get this wonderful sense of empowerment. Like now I'm totally in control of my life, right? And when you feel that, uh, you definitely feel like you can accomplish more in life. Walmart, hey, I hear you. You know, my worst job, one of my worst jobs was uh, working in a community center. It had a swimming pool and a hockey rink so the swimming pool i would i would spend a lot of my day cleaning out the filters of these swimming pools with these high powered hoses because there is so much slime human slime that will develop and clog up these these filters and where do you think those band-aids go that you jumped into the pool you had a band-aid on you come come out and there's no band-aid well i found them i found them for you you know, or like mopping up an entire hockey, hockey rink, you know, stadium, all the, it, it was brutal. Let it be fuel for your fire, Chloe. You know what I mean? Like 10 years from now, where do you want to be? 10 years from now, what do you want to be working on? You know, the decisions that you make today can totally affect that. I hope it does. Well, all right. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah, all right. Hard 
you could do it you could do it make those decisions stick to it and every other thought block it out time to put on those blinders and time to evolve your life you know and, and go after your goals you are absolutely right well thank you so much for your question and uh i hope uh i hope we meet someday in person and you could tell me all about how you used to work at Walmart and now you're art directing at such and such. Awesome. Great. Does anybody else have a question? I had a question. Hi, Bobby. <laughs> Hi, Patricia. Hi, I had a follow up question of uh, Danielle. Um, what he said about uh, uh, and you told about developing skills. Mm hmm um what uh what happens to me is sometimes i feel overwhelmed and uh, like i know different ways how to improve but i don't know where to start and sometimes um, i lose confidence while doing it because then i maybe like fixate maybe on learning z bridge and then i'm like oh, i need to learn uh, oh you have like all these different things so sometimes i feel overwhelmed like should I um, put more effort into learning painting and uh, and it's so on. putting on those blinders again, Patricia, it's yeah. a, it's literally the same thing, right? It, it's it's an easy answer to say. It's a hard answer to do. Hmm. Right. Because these voices will keep system, coming in. Um, like uh, how to like focus only on this one this week or. Uh, yeah, I, I acknowledge those voices, okay? So, like, the voices are telling me to do one thing. And it's, I f feel myself kind of getting caught up in it and going, oh, yeah, I really want to do that. And then I'll, I'll realize and I'll acknowledge that thought and go, yeah, I see you, thought. I see that you want me to do this thing. But I want control of my life. I'm going to keep going. And um, that voice that comes in, I will hear it, I'll acknowledge it, I'll acknowledge the fact that, oh, this is interesting, my voice in my head makes me want to do this, isn't that interesting? And then I'll tell it, shut up, and smack it down, and then go back to my drawing, you know, and just don't let it kind of, um, don't let, it's, it's a, it's a welcome, thing to knock on your door but it's not welcome in it's not welcome in my living room you know uh a huge part of like a, a goal for life for me is really just to conquer myself and all those things that come in uh that i don't want and that's what it sounds like for you yeah <laughs> thank you you're welcome. When I go to some Slido questions, uh, I have a question from Anonymous. It says, how can I overcome or how can I over self-doubt and keep second guessing myself? Oh, how can I overcome self-doubt and keep second guessing myself? I feel it's important uh, to question what I do and why to evolve but having a hard time so it's somewhat of the same thing somewhat of the same question now the one thing i want to add to this answer here is that um there are situations where you should stop you should turn and go another direction those are times when logic tells you this is no longer logical to keep moving this direction. However, logic is funny. It has a twin, twin sister. It looks exactly like her, but is totally evil. <laughs> and that's called fear. Fear and logic look exactly alike and a lot of times feel exactly alike. And a lot of times... Um, what you think is logical why you should stop something is only because it's fear that's telling you to stop it disguised as logic so we got to think past that 
next question is from my buddy Noah. Uh, I'm going to go to your question real soon, Noah, but I did want to also show some of these other awesome, awesome entries. Look at this one. This was from uh, last week's entry as well. So great. What are these other ones? Oh, okay. Just a close up. What an awesome entry. Natty Small. Fantastic. This one, traditional. Fantastic. When you're done your paintings, you can upload it with the hashtag Natty Min Art Challenge. It's on the bottom of the screen. That way I can find these a little easier. This one's from the very first challenge. Wonderful stylization. Oh, love, right? That's so fun. Fantastic. Another one, really cool tones here. Nicely done. All right, back to the challenge here. Now, part of this challenge for me was the idea. And so for your painting you know if you decide to do this again or something like that um and you want to do something that's totally your idea i found that as i was copying as i was studying this photo all these various um versions of this image i found myself starting to think about this final painting a lot like more and more and more and more as I start to figure out more and more of the painting um, I start to think about how am I gonna you know tackle this next time how am I gonna tackle this next time how am I gonna tackle this next time what are the things that I want to really be aware of improve on and what are the things that I want to um, bring into my very final one so you can see my very final study uh, that was a repre representational study, I added in a little bunny in there because I was thinking about this weird bunny creature. I was thinking, I don't know. I was, what I was thinking was um, it's nighttime. People don't see this weird creature. It kind of looks like a bunny, but it's a car carnivorous bunny, and it has a fish in its mouth. That's initially what I was thinking, and you'll start to see it develop. Um, yeah, so let's go on to a question from Noah, my buddy from Israel. I was just having a nice uh, honey lemon green tea on the weekend and I kind of ran out of honey, looked in my cupboard and found a jar of honey that I got from my trip in Israel and it was with Noah. So anyways, good to see you Noah. I wonder who else is out there and where are you all from? Let me know and I'll give you a bunch of shout outs. I love kind of seeing all the different amazing places everybody's from. So Noah says, can you tell us more about the artist workout on schoolism? So, you know, part of this whole thing that I'm doing here, I was originally, I was making a course, I'm still making a course on schoolism, artist workouts, right? Where it isn't just this final workout, I would be going through each of the various um, studies that I did with you, explaining to you specifically what am I concentrating on, what's my objective here, and you can study along with me, kind of doing those art workouts with me and so there's a whole series of artist workouts coming out first one is already available on schoolism steven silver he takes you through i think he has like 50 60 different daily workouts that you can do you do the workout you watch the video you play along you do it along with silver and you will start to absorb all these other insights that he starts to talk about, right? And you can start to see it and you can start to apply it to your own studies. It's one thing to work out, you know, do your studies, do your artistic workout by yourself. It's another to have a personal trainer because we're doing the exercises with you. 
you know, and that is what makes some of the biggest differences. Um, so yeah, everybody's coming in now. Nabs from Germany, Elena from Belgium, Archer from New Mexico, and then we've got Amsterdam, France, Israel, Atlanta, Georgia, Belgium, New Hampshire, Chile, UK, Rhode Island, Rhode Island again, uh, Ecuador, Italy, Quito, uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce the city from Ecuador, but I'm pretty darn sure that's where my buddy Alberto Ruiz uh, lives right now, so big shouts out if you know him. Uh, Italy, Romania, South Korea, Ukraine, Mexico, or Mexican in the UK, Diana, what's up, Belgium, Slovenia, Slovakia, India, holy smokes. Hong Kong, Louisiana, Croatia, Mexico, Canada, Brazil, Texas, Czech Republic, Brazil, um, Indonesia, France, Lithuania, holy cow, Colombia, everybody. That's so great to see. Malaysia, Argentina, fantastic, Denmark. All right, next question. Does anybody have a question from uh, Discord? No? All right. Well, we'll keep going. And if you do have a question, just stop me. Let me know. Okay. So slido.com. You could go to slido.com, hashtag choose stream, if you want to ask me a question from there. Uh, this one's from Anonymous. And Anonymous asks, what if I start working in animation and then want to switch to game concept art? Would people be willing to hire me regardless of what I did before? That seems totally fine. What if I started working in animation and I wanted to switch to game concept? Yeah, uh, that seems totally super easy to, or it's very realistic to do. Yeah, I worked in both animation and live action and 2D animation, you know, 2D, 3D animation and um, live action and games i've worked in games too mostly movies uh but yeah the one thing that you want to think about here is though uh if you're working in animation now you want to work in games later does anything in your portfolio look like games because when i look at a portfolio i'm always looking at it at like okay what are the skills here and also, what's this person all about? What are their interests? Uh, and if it looks like you want to just keep pursuing animation, then that's probably the wrong portfolio that you put together. Um, when, when I used to have to show my portfolio, there's been a bunch of times um, where I had to, you know, send in my portfolio anyways, and. I would make specific portfolios for that specific job, right? It's not even like game concept art. It's like, what kind of game is this? Okay, these are the pieces that I'm going to add into uh, my portfolio for that game. Now, I'm just glancing over. I see a question in, in YouTube. Uh, and it's how fast do you need to be able to draw in order to have a chance in the game gaming industry as a concept artist? Fast. <laughs> but at the same time, if you are not, you know, if you have amazing ideas, if you have amazing ideas and amazing execution, people will wait. So there is... Um, it's not like you have to be the fastest. It's not all about that because a lot of times, um, great, that person does really fast concepts and gets them to me right away. Great. We need to do seven meetings back and forth, back and forth, waiting, whatever, before we can get to a final that I'm happy with. Uh, what would I rather have, that or somebody that takes longer 
perhaps takes a week to hand in their first round of stuff. But when they hand it in, it's with so much thought. And every idea is not just like, here's a barrage of ideas. But every idea is unique. It's interesting. It's clever. You can tell that there's a lot of thought behind it. Uh, and I need to go through far fewer revisions before I get to the final. You see, in that case, I might want the, the second choice. Somebody that actually paints slower and draws slower. So it really, it's not necessarily about that. All right. Let's check that question off. And how much time do we have, everybody? We have 35 minutes. I hope, uh, I hope your stuff is going well. As you can see, my little meathead uh, rabbit monster is coming together. You can start to see it formed. This was a difficult challenge for me because I had no clear idea of what it was that I was going to paint and draw. You can see the ideas coming in through this video as well, which now looking back at it, I kind of appreciate just to see um, an artist kind of going one direction, stop, change directions. How did they change directions? You know, how fast was were the directions changed and how did they actually change directions? Was it just erasing? Was it painting over? Was it manipulating? Um, yeah. Do we have any more questions on Discord? If not, we will go on to another question on Slack. Three, two, one. All right. Anonymous asks, is it okay to hate every drawing you've, you've posted after 10 minutes? I kind of like it when I draw it, but showing it is a huge problem. Do you have any tips? Oh my goodness, yes. Uh, I totally totally know what you're talking about I don't have that much of a problem with that but I will look at the the writing that I've done for the post like constantly <laughs> but like yeah I've had friends with that problem where it's like once they posted something instantly Bobby should I have posted that Bobby, you know, I'm thinking of taking it down. This and that, nonstop. And I feel, I feel for them. Um, for me, it's, it's really like, kind of like I'm done this thought. This is where my thoughts go. They go on my Instagram or whatever. Don't look at them anymore. You know, post it up and just don't look at it anymore. I think maybe you, maybe the focus is on the wrong stuff. You know, perhaps your focus can be on the amount of time that you're spending on what. I think that's a really good focus. You know, like, maybe your goal isn't to do pretty drawings awesome drawings whatever that's your secondary goal but your primary goal is to spend this much time on the art and this much time on posting the art or looking at the art and that should be your goal uh, i know a huge sigh of relief kind of came over me uh, when I stopped having to do so much of my own social media. I still pop in, you know, I'll come in, I'll do my five, 10 minutes of checking stuff out, responding to things, but that's it. I know that I don't want to go beyond that. Because when you do go beyond that and you start getting into social media, especially Twitter, oh my God, uh, it's like a rabbit hole. 
especially Twitter, because you start to see these conversations happening between one person and another, and maybe they're arguing or something, and you're just like, oh, that's ridiculous. Who else thinks this is ridiculous? Let me read on. Let me see if anybody else said anything, you know. Um, giant rabbit holes, you know, think about it like you're going to do uh, for every two hours of art that you do, you do five, 10 minutes on social media. That's it. Because it's, it's funny because it's, we still need social media, especially like if you're in a position like I am where, um, you know, I use the internet. I use the internet for much of my exposure for people to see that I'm still around, I'm still kicking it, I'm still painting and drawing, I'm still doing art. Okay, Anonymous asks, I'm pretty sure we don't have any more Discord questions at the moment. Do we have any more Discord questions? Okay, Slido. Anon Anonymous asks, have you ever had the feeling that you've fooled everybody and cheated somehow that you can draw good and you don't deserve to work in the industry or be an artist i used to yeah i used to feel that way and sometimes i still do i i feel like in the beginning i felt that way for sure for sure especially working on my first big movie which was you know tim burton's alice in wonderland uh, de definitely felt like this is surreal. Uh, I don't belong here. And then I got used to it. You know, I, I started to feel more and more comfortable. And then I got to a point where I was like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. And then it got to a point where I was like, ugh, I don't know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? It comes in waves, comes and goes. Uh, but again how i look at these things is like i kind of try to separate these very almost like animal instincts these like very subconscious thoughts from me like i separate myself from my body my muscles my brain i am the consciousness behind that, right? So uh, when something happens, then I, I might think to myself, oh, that's interesting. My brain is angry or my brain is frustrated. I try to do this as much as possible because in that space of that thing happening to you and your reaction, there's a space there. And if we can enlarge that space, that's self-control. That's our opportunity for self-control and um, being in control of our, like doing the things that we want to do. So when I start to feel like an imposter, instead go to yourself, hey, this is what Bobby was talking about. That's interesting. My brain feels like it's an imposter and it's trying to tell me that I'm an imposter. But this is the thing that Bobby was saying, and this happens to pretty much everybody, the majority of everybody on the whole friggin' planet. Okay. How much time do we have now? We have 27 minutes. 27 minutes. Start to think, how are you gonna complete this thing? What do you gotta finish? You already went two, through two-thirds of your time. All right. Anonymous. Hi, Bobby. What are the life events in your life you found still funny and make me laugh out loud? Oh, that's a f great question. Oh, man. Things that were funny that still make me laugh out loud. Uh, okay. Okay, Chew Streamers. I'll tell you a funny story. Okay, but it has to stay 
in between us <laughs> as much as possible but whatever oh, should I even say it uh, I guess it doesn't matter that much okay you know what I'll, I'll say it um, yeah okay it's it's very embarrassing it's um i don't know if it's the funniest story i've ever kind of thought that's happened to me it probably isn't but it's something that came to the top of my head when i started thinking about it uh when i was maybe 21 22 i went on a trip to china it was a tour uh, where it was me and a bunch of other, a bunch of other uh, people with Chinese descent, um, kind of coming back for this government subsidized tour to see how great the motherland is. That was the kind of premise, right? Anyway, so we're going all over the place. We're going to all these different cities, and it's so much fun. So so many different towns, and really learning about where my heritage kind of came from, where my people came from, and where they still live and how they live. It was wonderful, wonderful. Uh, one of these trips was to go to this ancient waterfall uh, that's supposed to be just gorgeous. And you can actually climb up the waterfalls, behind the waterfalls, and there's these ancient statues behind the waterfalls that you know, people have built years and years ago. And supposedly, legend has it, that Buddha himself has visited these falls. It's like, okay, cool, that sounds really neat. So we're all on the bus. We're going towards this place. It's far. We drive, 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 get there, get off the bus, and it's just, it's just um, green, right? Grass, trees, okay get off the bus, start walking, start walking. We could hear the falls and he, you know, it sounds beautiful. And we keep walking, keep hearing the falls, keep walking, keep hearing the falls. It takes us a while. We get to the falls, walk all the way there, go behind the waterfall, see the statues. Looks amazing. We leave, we go back to the bus, walk all the way back, you know, great time. By the time I get back, I've been listening to waterfalls forever and me and my friend, we really need to pee really, really badly. And so I, I go to my friend. I'm like, do you need to pee? Yeah, I need to pee. We ask the tour guide, where's the washroom? Is there a washroom? And he points to a pile of rubble. It looked literally like Game of Thrones, like rubble. And we walk over there and we see the, amongst the rubble, it's kind of like two corridors and one had, both corridors have new signs on there. The only thing that's new on there. One says men, one says women. Okay, I go into the men's. And this is a washroom that's cobbled together with stones and mud, right? There's no roof on this place. It looks hundreds of years old, <laughs> practically. I go into my little uh, stall. I look down. And like many places in the world, there was no toilet. Usually there's a hole or something, right? I look, I don't see a hole. I see a black rectangle. And then I realize that that black rectangle used to be a hole with kind of like a downwards ramp going through a hole in the wall onto the other side of the wall. And so your stuff you did it in, in the little rectangle, it would slide through to the opposite side of the wall. But this washroom was so old that it was backed up and there was no more hole. It was just a black rectangle, it was all full. I needed to go so bad, I, I, I was like, okay, you know what, I'm just gonna do this. I start peeing into the, the black rectangle and then the black rectangle started to buzz and started to move 
And then I realized that the black rectangle wasn't a bunch of doo-doo. It was a bunch of native Chinese insects on top of doo-doo. And they were not happy that I was spraying them. So they all started to attack me. Start hitting me in my face. Hit me in my stuff. And I ran out of there with my pants down trying to get all of these things out of my pants. Almost knocking over a little girl and her mom. And these things start chasing me out of the washroom, still hitting me. And I was running around my bus and everybody's on the bus watching this whole thing. The girl and the mom that I bumped into as I was running past them, they were also on my bus. And I had to keep going on that tour with the same people you know, for days after that. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Not the funniest story, I guess, but yeah. Amazing I'm sh- story. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I'm sure when people, uh, you know, think back to that, that trip, they, they probably think, oh yeah, I remember when Bobby, you know, blah, 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 got attacked and, Start running around the bus with his pants down. Uh, okay, there we go. Why don't we go on to another question here? So, um, good one, anonymous. Oh, somebody on Discord, right on. Hi, Celine. Hey, um, can you hear me clearly? Yes. Hi, Celine. Awesome. Hi. Um. I've actually asked you a question before, like, way back. <laughs> um, so, first of all, I'm super cool that you started this uh, workout series on Schoolism. It's like a super good timing right now with the quarantine, so it's awesome. <laughs> um, Fantastic. My question was, yeah, um, so I was wondering if you had this... Um, is there like a perfect like study to personal peace like ratio in a way? Because um, I tend to do a lot of studies, but I never actually really put them into practice um, because I always feel like before I can actually start a personal project, I need to really level up in my fundamentals, and I... then I never actually do anything. So it's yeah. <laughs> No, totally. I I actually have um, my own. I'm not sure if this is the perfect formula, but I my own kind of formula is I try to do like about six or seven times more studying than I do producing, like producing my own art. Yeah, about six or seven times. And I don't know if that's the right ratio. And sometimes that's very hard to keep up. But the more that I find that I keep it up, uh, the more demand that comes my way of like jobs, you know, because when people constantly see you grow, like they just want to work with you. That's how I have found it. You know, a lot of times people want to work with me because they know it's not just for what I can do now, but it's because of my my work ethic and kind of like my own philosophies on art and studying versus uh, painting and drawing. You know, I love the whole, I love doing this stuff. I would do this stuff all day, all night, every day, all the time um, if I could, where it's I'm studying at least six times whatever my subject is. And the seventh study is something that's much more imaginative you know and then all of a sudden i am creating something for myself and i'm studying at the same time does that make sense yeah yeah it's really all about like trying to double things up quadruple things up like i said this this uh whole studying thing this whole like illustration this 90 minute art challenge thing that i've been doing has been something that i was working on anyways uh i was making it into a schoolism class 
So I'm taking parts of this and I'm also doing these streams with it so that people have something to do during quarantine um, and for free. You know, that was the idea. And then at the same time, I had something new to post on social media. So it's kind of like three things in one. Okay. Thanks for the question, Celine. Yeah, thank you. Right on. Um, next question Hello? here. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I'm Jana from Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Hi, Jana. Um, hi. I um I have done the Chew way this last week, so I did or try to do an hour a day on this whole um, wolf by moonlight thing. Fantastic! How'd you find I, it? Really hard. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good, but did you feel like you learned it. stuff? Did you well, feel like you learned stuff? I um uh, well I've learned that this picture um has colors only in the left lower quadrant of the color wheel so all it's very muted and very dark yes except um, for the yellows except for the the right. eyes and the the stars and yeah the stars yes um so and i um let me see i wrote it all down um well the interesting thing was that the composition isn't actually very interesting the wolf is just in the middle and if you put it in a version by the rule of thirds it's actually in the middle square of yeah. all the nine squares yeah <laughs> um and then there is a quite simple background um of course let me put up front that i totally um sucked at this whole challenge and i failed miserably so i cannot do what this artist does um that's okay. So, you know what, though? Uh, success is in actually trying and doing it. It really is. Right. Yes, of course. Of course. Um, and I have I have done uh, better studies and um, lesser studies. I've done six times 10 minute studies, four times 30 minute studies and three times an hour. Mm -hmm. um, to see if I could find find it all. Um, I find it hard to get the wolf the right size. I make it too big every time. Mm -hmm. And um, I've also tried to do it blind. Um, where, well, I at least came to the same conclusions as all the previous ones, big wolf. And, um, but I knew all the colors quite and um, the composition, um, however hard uh, it was, I got it somewhat right. But I have questions. Yes, yes. Um, so what did you struggle with with this painting? Well, uh, the interesting thing about this exercise for me compared to the other ones is, like you said, um, it wasn't like I found the composition, like that was the thing that drew me to it. It wasn't a lot of things. What it was was the lighting and the, um, yeah. the overall tonal design of it. Like you said, it's like all of the, all of the uh, values here, except for the stars and the eyes, were fifty percent dark, darkness or darker. Or mute, <laughs> okay, right? That, yeah. Yeah, and it wouldn't get into. It wouldn't really get past. Um, it wouldn't really get past ninety percent black. No, no, it. it Indeed, yeah. The the weird black blob that's supposed to be a dune, I guess, on the right side of the painting is just a um, muted dark grayish blue thing. Yes, yes. And so that was the interesting stuff for me. Right. You know, so um, when I started painting this as well, you know, that's what I was going for. Uh, when I was painting this, I didn't paint it like the other ones. I went straight to color every time. I did that too. It still was very hard. Yes, yes. I went straight to color every time because that was the most important thing to me. It could have been hard to you because if you're doing them with me, I would have given you specific things to focus on and specific things to understand. 
you know, so for right. example, it would be easier for you, most likely, I'm just guessing, but I think it would be easier for you to actually do these studies if I explain this to you, like, okay, well, the mountains in the very back, they get quite a bit saturated as well. And they go into more of a blue, starting to perhaps even go towards purple hue. And Frederick yeah. Remington, a lot of times he wouldn't use the the actual blackness of the paint to no. to create value, right? He'll use hue. Yes, yes. Yeah, so yeah, then... I, yeah. Well, you know, for... And also for those that are listening, I could just perhaps explain a little bit. As things are getting more and more dark, you would see that generally, a very general statement here is that the colors would get more and more saturated. When you're looking at the, the tones that are the lightest in this image, besides the stars. And the eyes. Right, and the eyes, they generally get less saturated. So let's make sense of that, right? And I would start to tell you, let's poke at the sky. Let's look at the amount of saturation on the sky. Well, it's, it's actually not that saturated. Let's look at the hill and go, okay, yeah, that's not that saturated either. But then the darker yeah, parts of the, yeah, yeah. The, the darker parts of the hill, they get quite a bit more saturated, right? So yes. one practice would be let's, really notice the amount of saturation that you're using and that's your main focus the next practice that we do of this painting i would tell you let's look at the values and i start to point out all the values and go here's the value range that we want to think about and work from now let's use that as our focus you see and slowly yes. breaking this down into more easily digestible pieces of knowledge Right, and that's how you can tackle this painting, the whole entire thing. So I have to ask, what did you think of the reflection of the wolf? I thought it was, <laughs> I thought it was cool how simplified it was. But it's not correct, right? If you look into the to a reflective mirror, you would get like the angle which you're looking in. It bounces out, you would see the uh, belly of the wolf instead of a copy upside down. Well, for me, like I, I've, I remember like one of my studies, I didn't even remember, <laughs> I didn't even remember the, the reflection. Um, but the other thing is that uh, some of these studies, like it is about the finish. And then some of these studies, it's about how much can you get away with? How little right. do you need to put down? You know, and that I to me is also, <laughs> yeah. And there, there's a lot of times it's like there are examples where you can see, okay, yeah, this person simplified, this person simplified, but, but only one do I really believe. And the other one looks like kind of like a sketchy mess, you know, so there is yeah. stuff to be learned from that as well. Like the sketchiness how much detail do we really need to get the point across like right. he doesn't need that much detail in his because there's not that much contrast or attention in that reflection no no there's not um no and i i looked at it further i did a value check and mm -hmm. then his values are completely like like magnificent i didn't expect that because it looks so dull all together like but he has much more complex paintings with much more uh, complex subject matters with these horse gestures with people yeah, riding the that. horses. Wow, those are great. Yeah, I didn't re I didn't want to get into those because then those studies would be heavily about the the gesture as well. Right? Yes, and, and I didn't right. want people to spend that much time on the gesture as opposed to what I felt was the most intriguing thing about this which was how he depicted nighttime. Yeah, so um, there was one other thing I was wondering about that. Since all the darks, uh, at least shades, uh, tend to go to more blue shades and uh, the lighter parts or lit parts 
seem to go uh, towards the yellow um, side. These are color schemes you would use during day, right? So it's, it almost feels like he painted nighttime because he uh, lived in the wild, wild west while that still existed and saw these uh, moonlit tephrals and, and stuff and then painted it with a mindset set of how you light warm uh, lights, dark, uh, cool shadows at daylight. Did you see that too? Well, yeah, like uh, like I was saying, he's going towards these cool shadows because also the hue gets darker. Right. I find that very hard still. All the values are, are hard. Yeah, like purple, blue, those values get quite dark. Right, just if you're taking the exact same saturation, uh, black, and you're just looking at the hues, and that's right. that's one of the cool things about it is because like the those mountains in the back, they feel like they are darker than perhaps some other values that are there. Oh, uh, that's what the, the the black blob is on the right, mountains in the back. Yes, yes. Oh, with a reflection. Yes. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> right? They they feel so dark, but then when you when you actually look at it and and maybe eye drop it, you can see it doesn't, you know, it's it's like maybe 80% black. That's the value of it. But the saturation right. and the hue makes it feel even darker. Yeah. Yeah, it was very interesting to say the least it's something that i like i really love studying this painting just because of its simplicity in like you're able to study this in an hour but at the same time there's all this other information in there that's it's very intriguing how it all works together because some of the shadows are actually they're not cool they're not a cool shadow um you can see like some of the shadows on the on the wolf especially as it gets uh, away from the belly and starts to get more towards the ground. Uh, With the hind leg. Right, the reflective light, I guess, yeah. and everything warms up those shadows and they're actually warm. So there is, when you kind of observe it, you can kind of feel like a glow coming from underneath. And as the shadows get higher and higher, they get darker, but they actually don't get darker in value the hue right, is just yes. changing fun yes. right it makes art yeah. so much more fun it's like how uh, can i incorporate were... this information into something yeah. else well there there were some frustrations i have to be honest um but yeah okay <laughs> i have to do this more i guess yeah yeah so which one have you picked for next week then Oh, getting ahead of ourselves. Yes, uh, I'll put it up on the screen. So next week, I want to do this um, photo. I want to do a photo again, except this photo has different lighting. It's the exact opposite. We're going from very dark to very bright. And um, and it's of this this girl that has this floral kind of pattern on her shirt. So I'm also very interested in how to get this all down in an hour. There's going to be a lot of stuff that will be suggestive. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's going to be part of the fun. It's like getting into like these challenging things. Now, if they are challenging for you, if they become too challenging where you don't actually feel like you really digested any knowledge, uh, take a section. Don't aim for the whole entire painting. Yes, I did that with the wolf too, like doing the wolf only, for example, at some points, or um, like just do well, parts. Fantastic, yeah. Then you, yeah, you're, keep going in this direction and you will find like, um, you know, in a, in a month, two months at the most, you're like, holy smokes. Yeah, I did really learn something. Uh, huh. 
it's kind of like one of those you you look back and you're like, wow, I really went far. Oh wow, I'm looking uh, I'm looking forward to that. I study very hard in general, um, in general, but mm -hmm. um, we're gonna see how this ends. Yes, I'll try to keep this up. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for the artist workout. It's like very extensive, so cool. Oh, awesome! Well, I'm so glad you you saw um, Silver's artist workout already. Uh, yeah, I checked a few, uh, like the first three, <clears throat> and um, I checked the other lessons to see what the difference were, uh, differences were. Uh, but they were, they were really great. Um, to everybody who doesn't have a schoolism um, sub yet, do this. Do you, this is cool. It's really cool. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. I'm doing them as well. Like Silver's, I really liked the fact that he gives me all these things to think about as I'm drawing yeah, and it. And he builds. He builds on all the stuff beforehand. It's like he yes. grow with it. Yes. Yeah, it's really cool. It's totally different when you're kind of, uh, when you're accompanied by a professional. Uh, you just yeah. see things totally different. But thank this you so much you for your... Course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Uh, well, yeah, thank you so much for your question. It's a really of great course. one. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, awesome. Well, why don't we go on to a couple more questions here. We have, oh, we're almost done. So let's go, let's finish. All right, next question is from Anonymous. What light and color course would you recommend for a non-newbie artist? Sam Nielsen or Tonko House? Oh, well, Sam Nielsen's was, you know, I'm not a newbie. I found it challenging. Sam, his course, it's like he brings all the science down to photons to make you really understand what light and color is all about. I would perhaps do that first. I would do that one first and then the Tonko House one. The Tonko House one, that's super challenging as well. Both of these are still doable by noobs as well because it's really about how do different people think and paint and draw and that kind of thing, not necessarily how, how to do it. What is the right way? There is no right way. Uh, but the Tonko House one is, of course, hugely popular for a very good reason. That one, um, that's the one I would finish with. They're both fantastic. And if you have a Schoolism account, that means you get access to all the Schoolism content, which includes the artist workout that we're talking about with... Uh, with Steven Silver. That's the first one that, one that came out. I believe the next one is, should be Ian McKegg. We're working on that. And it's getting close to the finish line. So, you know, it's like, a, it's like Christmas for me. Uh, and then I'm working on my own. And Vouter Tulp is working on his artist workout. And uh, Nathan Fawkes. So it's, it's super exciting for me because also this helps with um, if you ever felt like you didn't have the time to take a course, that's what these courses are about. You know, you don't have to watch them and take a bunch of notes and then study and remember stuff and then, you know, do all these extra things. You put on the video you start drawing along, you start painting along. When the video is done, then you're done. And you're done the artist workout for the day. And each video is around 20 to 60 minutes long. Mine, sometimes they get into the 90 minutes. Every seventh day, you get into a 90 minute challenge, which is like this challenge right here. All right, everybody. So. So this was great, this was super fun. You can see the painting is done. Voila, uh, added in a tail because I was thinking, 
It's kind of weird if it's just a bunny. I just want to add in a tail. And I put in some weird gills on its cheeks because I was just kind of feeling it. Um, but you can see the fish, it's not that well defined. And that's on purpose. You know, I don't want you to be able to see it super defined. It's in the shadows. So it kind of made sense to me. Anyways, love the whole entire experience. Definitely not going to be my last time studying uh, Moonlight Wolf by Frederick Remington. Now, next week, I'm going to put the challenge up. I haven't put it up on YouTube, but I'll let you know what it is. Same time next week, different challenge. Okay, 90 minutes to do this painting, to do to study this photo, do a illustration based on this photo. And this is what the image looks like. So quite a lot to do there. We're not trying to do everything. We're trying to allocate our time the best way possible. Okay. And how fun is that? We're going from this kind of a subject to another completely different subject. Again, my focus is really going to be about the light. It's going to be about the light and the economy of my brush strokes. What things should I suggest? What things should I make very specific and detailed? And I uh, hope to see you guys next week. It's all about the practice. So this is Bobby Chu signing off. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in once again. And I'll see you guys next time.